This is the plaintiff, Janet Bilarski. She says her lifelong dream was to own her own horse to take for rides, so she purchased a horse named Tank from the defendants. When she got the horse home, it fell down the first time it took a walk out of the trailer. She had the horse examined, and it has some kind of ailment which causes his knees to buckle, and he falls a lot. So she wants her money back. The defendants refuse, and she's suing them here and now for the $8,000 she's owed. These are the defendants, Emmanuel Rose and his wife, Betty. They say the plaintiff rode Tank for three days before purchasing him. And if she had any concerns, she should have had a pre-purchase vet exam. This plaintiff's just having buyer's remorse because owning a horse is a big responsibility. Of course, of course. They're accused of being naysayers. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see it, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. Janet Bilirisky. Yes. You are suing Betty Rose and Gerald Wagner? For eight thousand dollars, seventy-five hundred that you paid for a horse and five hundred for shipping it. Tell me why. Well, what happened was I had had a horse forty years ago, and then my husband uh, said, "Janet, um, I'd like to take some money out of my retirement money so that you can have a horse. I know how much you love horses." So um, my two requirements for a horse was that I wanted a horse that was very calm because I'm getting older. I didn't want to horse that was going to jump and not, you know, I'd fall down. And then the second thing is I wanted a horse that was very smooth because I had a bad back. And I looked and saw their um, advertisement and these horses have a special desensitization training. So I thought, oh, they're going to be really calm. That looks like a really neat thing. They put them through this obstacle course for a month or whatever. And so I drove down in Southern California. How far away was it? It was very far away. It took us like eight hours because we got lost. It was right near the... Okay, well, <laughs> minus the lost part. How far it, was near, it was near the Mojave Desert, and okay. it was very desert-like. All right, so go on. I got there, and then I tried the horse. What was the horse's name? Tank. Okay. And he was really nice. He was really uh, very smooth. How I, old? He's about 12, but, you know, nothing set in stone of what he was. And so I, I thought I wanted him, and um, but since I was in the middle of nowhere... I, um, I did not get a vet to come. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means, um, it means that... I mean, I, I know what you think you're saying. You're saying, I was in the middle of nowhere, so there's no such thing as a vet. There, what kind of place? Are you running a horse ranch? What have you got over there? We have a two-and-a-half-acre horse ranch. Here. How many horses? Uh, right now, we have eight. Are there other horse ranches around you? Yes. Are there vets in your area? Oh, yes. They're not like a, a rare and elusive uh, mirage, no, no, right? We I mean, you know that, you know. We so anyway, you did not, the point is you did not hire a vet to come out and take a look and get I didn't know any of the vets. vets. They knew the vets around. I didn't well, yeah, want to buy phone. anything. Go. I didn't want to drive that far and go back. Probably the Why vet... would you have to buy it without having a vet look at him first? Because I was very excited. Right, but you know there are mechanisms to, we have all kinds of ways for you to buy the horse without having to physically be there. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you physically didn't have to buy the horse at that second. I didn't have to buy the horse, but what happened was um, Betty said that if I didn't buy the horse, then she, it was a really great horse. She was going to raise the price that night and put it on the internet. You know what I do when people tell me that and I'm going to buy something? Have at it. She also said that um, uh, many times that they, she stands by her horses and that she wants to make sure that the horse is a good fit for the owner. So, so can I see the contract you signed? I don't have it. I'm I okay, do you have, you have it? it? You should always keep a copy of it. I know, but I lost it. No, I, you know what you should do? Do you have a phone? Does it take pictures? Take, yeah. Every single time I sign anything, I take a picture. So would this be the contract that you signed? Yes, I okay. signed this. All right, so you can hand that to my bailiff, please. Okay, the horse is delivered, and what happens? Okay, the, the same day that's delivered, within a half an hour, it, it, it came out of the trailer, and I wanted, we walked it around. I gave it to my daughter. She walked it up a little trail, and it fell down. So it fell down within a half an hour of 
of receiving the horse. With nobody on it? Nobody on it. She was just leading and it fell down. So uh, in a few days, I rode the horse and it was not, um, it, it, he was not easy to manage. And I got on and he threw me off. So I fell and hurt my back and my arm. I'm so sorry to hear that. Did you, were you hospitalized or it wasn't No, that? and I was All wearing right. a helmet. Okay, I did good. have to get a new good. helmet. I think it cracked. Yeah. And, well, um, it did its job. I was kind of shaken up because I wanted the horse to be really well mannered. That was like one of my things. And I had trouble getting on it. It moved away. It wouldn't stand still. So anyway, a few days later. You think later, maybe the horse was um, your new, it's new, it's environment new, that maybe it was freaked out? Not really, because it, it's been trained, and most horses that are well-trained will stand there when people are mounting them, and will walk, and will not, won't jump sideways, and this when kind you of thing. Were, when you drove the eight hours and rode the horse, how long did you ride the horse? About a half an hour. And nothing bad happened. You liked it. That's why you bought it. Well, yes, but it was over 100 degrees down there, and they had the mount in the sun, and I suspect maybe that was one of the reasons that it was so calm. Okay, so anyway, so now, um, so you start having these problems with the horse and what happens? You have, you hire a vet to come over now and take a yeah. look at the horse and figure it out. And what? So that's when I called and got the vet and okay. the vet came out. Okay. And it ended up after some tests, it has it had a neurological disease. Can I see the vet report? Sure. Um, you've heard her testify the things that the horse did Yes. Uh, when the horse got there, what say you about that? Did that behavior ever exhibit itself where you got with when you guys had the horse? Not at all, Your Honor. As a so, matter of fact, uh, we have two videos that we'd like to. And uh, actually, Mrs. Uh, Bieloruski came and stayed with us with her daughter for three days. And she she didn't ride. She didn't ride the horse for half an hour. She rode it for three. Were you, did you days. stay with them for three no, days? No, I just stayed overnight one day. She was. She there. was with us for three days. No. With her daughter, and rode the horse. My wife, who's a trainer, gave her lessons. So there was nothing wrong with the horse whatsoever. Okay, let me ask you this, yes. though. I, have you seen the reports? I have not. Okay. He's saying EPM. Would any of you like to tell me what EPM it's, is? It's uh, equine protozole myocephalitis. And what does that mean? It's a uh, neurological disorder, Okay. which is disguised. It's very hard to detect. It is caused by horses being exposed to possums. We have no possums out in the high desert where we live. That's how it's spread. Which acquires the organism from cats, raccoons, skunks, armadillos. We're getting far afield of what I want to talk about. This is a, you, you gave me a, who's this? This is, uh, huh? this is the plaintiff. Okay. I didn't recognize her in street clothes. Yeah. And so she rode the horse to her say? satisfaction. And she was very happy with the horse. All right, can I, the, say, can I say something else? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. When, I was nervous about buying the horse, but I was very assured by Betty. She said, we, really, we stand by our horses. In fact, both of them said, we stand by our horses. Right, and what did you take that to mean? That if something happened, you I could- You get a refund? I could get, no, I could return it. In fact, Betty right. said- Right, hold on, I want you to wait a second. What did you take this to mean, which is what you signed? Buyer acknowledges there are no addendums or agreements other than what's in here. Buyer acknowledges that tank is to her satisfaction and agrees to purchase tank as is. Buyer acknowledges that all sales are final. Buyer acknowledge capital letters, all sales are final. Buyer hereby acknowledges and agrees that the bill of sale and purchase agreement contains a no return policy. So what did you think those words meant? Yes, but verbally, Betty said to me that I could exchange the horse. Did you say that? No, I did not. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, um, the plaintiff didn't take the horse to a vet, has problems. Is it tough luck? Is a, is a horse like a car in that respect? I believe that they should have taken it to a vet to have it checked out. But if you don't, is it just tough don't, luck? There should be a certain amount of time that the horse should not get sick for, like 30 days or 45 days or okay, something. Okay, that's like an that. interesting argument. You buying what she's saying? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm totally buying what she's saying. It definitely makes sense. So, if you, so a, you're saying a horse is not like a car, so that if you just don't take it to a vet but the horse is sick, you get your money back? I don't know about that one, Harvey. I, I think... You, you get what you buy. Well, do you have to take a horse to a vet like you take a car to a mechanic? I think you, if, you know, if you're serious about it, you should. Okay, going inside the courtroom. So what did you end up doing with the horse? I sent the horse away. I made a, um, gave the horse to a man who had um, out to pasture, 
And then I bought another horse from him, paid another three thousand five hundred, and now I have a new but horse. So, you, so was that? So was Tank part of that deal? Yes, because I couldn't ride him anymore. So then, why are you suing for the entire purchase price when you you got some value for Tank, didn't you? No, not what? really. No. He said, "I'll take I Tank. See, I'll what? take. I'll take Tank. And if he gets better after all this medication, maybe I can sell him and make a couple thousand dollars. If not, I will keep him out in pasture and I won't put him to sleep." So that was really the incentive. And he would come and take the horse. It cost. But why did you pay so little for that other horse? Well, that's more of a standard of, of a price for that type of $3, horse. Thirty-five hundred dollars. Yeah, but the reason I paid more for Tank was the special training. Okay. All right, here's where our problem lies, and I think that you know this. I can only enforce the rights that you bargain for, okay? So you have a contract that specifically uses the words as is and says, hey, buyer beware, capital letters everywhere, all sales are final, no returns. I don't know why on God's green earth you would buy the horse without having a vet look at it. So if you decide that you're going to buy a horse without having it checked out by a vet, how am I supposed to pretend you didn't sign that contract and say, give this lady back her money? Well, I can tell you that they were dishonest. <clears throat> I have an email here. Contrary to your assertion, Betty and I are not in the business of selling horses. Well, I have about six ads showing they are in the business of selling horses. And he said, you sign the contract as is. And I looked up some laws. I didn't just Put, it, put this suit together until I looked up some lemon laws for horses in California. Okay. And it said you don't have to strictly abide by a written contract if, if there was verbal intervention, if there was pressure. It's sort of like a used car salesman. She said, I'm going to sell the horse if you don't get it. Once okay. I went, and, yeah. You are a grown woman. Grow a backbone. Nobody put a gun to your head to buy the horse. No. You have regret because you didn't have the horse looked at before. No. And that's on you. The verdict in this case is for the defendant. Oh boy. oh, boy. Well, I think the plaintiff is surprised she lost this case. What do you think? Just well, happened. I am surprised because um, there is verbal agreements also that go on besides a contract. But, and uh, I read some Lemon Laws, but if you look at just the contract, yes, they sold it to me like that. Well, that's, you live by the written contract. You I know? suppose you do. That's no, the law, but it's not justice. It's like buying a car. And yeah, yeah, as, you, is, as is. And there are lemon laws for cars, too. I didn't know there was a lemon law for a horse. Yes, there is lemon law for really? horses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, you can't prevail. You know, I, I think it's pretty gutsy for you at this point in your life to want a horse to go out and ride. Well, yeah. that's right. I was so excited. I really didn't want to wait. That, that was part of it. I didn't want my husband to change his mind and say, oh, well, you can't get the horse now, so that was an incentive to, so to get it quickly. So how about what you have now? Are you riding now? I'm riding a really nice horse now. Okay. So I just lost a lot of money. Thank right. you very much. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. You Thank couldn't you. prevail. All right. Here come the plain day defendants now. Did you know there was a lemon law for horses? There is no lemon law for horses. I was going to say I haven't heard of that. No, before. there's no no there's no lemon law for horses, for cars. Yeah. Do you feel sorry for her that she's, I mean, she, you know, she felt that you didn't treat her right. Yeah. yeah, but she's just uh, uh, she not a, the horse or anything. she's not a horse woman. You said so. she stayed three days. Yeah. She said three, only one. You I couldn't understand. even agree on that. Three days. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. Harvey. Okay, you know, the plaintiff's talking about some verbal agreement that was made and you have writing. Never, ever rely on a verbal agreement if there's a writing in place. Add that verbal agreement to the writing. You will lose otherwise. And that will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now.